come to God, but we have illicit relationships with the world. We watch it, we eat it, we dress like it, we act like it. God says, this can't continue. So therefore, I believe, it is my conviction that someday, after the cleansing process and the crisis, we're going to go back, backward in time, and go back to the Philadelphia church. Where the Philadelphia church, well, what does Philadelphia stand for? Brotherly love. If we were to take a, I don't know if we took a, if we took a, what did they call it? A, an encuesta. I can't think in English. Survey. survey. Thank you. For those of you that know Spanish, yeah. Uh, you have a survey of all the communities. Which is the most loving church in town? And immediately they would check Seventh Day Adventist Church, right? What? No, you're, you're just kidding me. They wouldn't? The most loving church in town wouldn't be number one, Seventh Day Adventist? That's sad, isn't it? Probably it wouldn't be. Probably it wouldn't. So therefore, someday it will be. Philadelphia will be the name of the church. The church of brotherly love. The moment you even come to the doors or get into the parking lot, you are seized with brotherly love. Please, you won't leave without eating with us, will you? you need, did you know that focus on the family in the United States... If a single mother calls Focus on the Family with problems, they will write you a check and send you money. If you're a single mother and you need help, you get a check from Focus on the Family. What about the general conference? You call a general conference? You call your local church, Seventh day Adventist? I'm a single mother. I can hardly raise my kids. I have legal problems. What do I do? We'll be right there, honey. Don't worry. We're going to bring a check and we'll pay for your bills. Is that what we would do? That's what Focus on a Family does. I'm, I, I'm, I'm aghast. Someday, we're going to be the loving church. I'm looking forward to that day. The moment you even get close, you just get sucked in by the magnet. It's called love. Right? Okay. Let's, let's go back to the Philadelphia church. That's the one I want to focus on. I'm just going to focus on channel, uh, channel, channel 12. Television. I love television, by the way. I don't like to watch it, but I love to buy them. I love when a television station puts on God's beautiful programming. I went to, I went to a, a department store in Bolivia. You know where they have all the, uh, you know, 10, 10 televisions high? The whole wall is filled. And I went by, and guess what they were showing? <laughs> Our station. Beautiful nature music with God's music coming out of all 100 TVs. And I went by and said, Lord, thank you for letting me see such a beautiful thing. I just love it when, I love Monopoly. Bill Gates loves Monopolies, but David Gates loves too. I love to see God's signal, number one. I am tired of being a tail. I want to be the head again. I want God's people to be the head in front of everything else. God first. I love it, and it's happening. Okay, let's read it. Verse 12. To him that overcometh, now you're going to follow my logic, please. To him that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Okay, th does that mean you're going to become a thing of cement or marble? No, it means you become a permanent fixture. You live there. I will make a pillar, a permanent resident in the temple of my God to those that overcome. And it says, and they will not have to go in and out anymore. And I will write upon him the name of my God. Whoa, we're kind of figuring out who this group is that's going to overcome, huh? It says, they will have the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is the New Jerusalem. There's the word New Jerusalem again. Code word for God's overcomers. New Jerusalem. Code word for the bride, code word for the overcomers. And it says, and I will write upon him the name of, of my new name. Now, when I got married, my wife changed her name and took my father's name, Gates, in my name. Do they do that here in Australia too? You take the new name, you change your name. There's a group of people that are going to overcome. They have the code word, New Jerusalem. And what is New Jerusalem a code word for? Bride. If you have the name New Jerusalem on you, you are the bride. Because we are told in the spirit of prophecy that Jesus, when he finishes his ministry in the sanctuary, he takes off his robe of an of a, of a intercessor, a, a priest, and puts on kingly robes, and he goes into his father, and he's married to the New Jerusalem. So he's not married to the city. He's married to a people that have the name New Jerusalem. Are you understanding? So the bride is the New Jerusalem. The New Jerusalem is written on the name of the people here that overcome. And who are these people? They also have the name of the Father and the Son also. 
Anywhere in the Bible can you think of a group of people that have the name of the Father on their forehead? Revelation 14. And I looked on the Mount Zion and I saw what? Look it up. A lamb. And with him, I said, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having the Father's name written on their foreheads. There is a group of people that will have the Father's name on their foreheads. They also have the name New Jerusalem as well. Now, think of this. Is there any group of people that change their name? Yes, those that are married to the lamb. They're the bride. But, but David, I thought all the people... Now, hold, hold it a minute. When I just married my daughter, she did not take me on the honeymoon. Why? Because I am only an invited guest. You see, the bride does the inviting. Everybody else is a guest. And if you read the Spirit of Prophecy, you find in the Great Controversy, I don't remember the page right near the end, Sister White says, if you're an invited guest, you cannot be the bride. This is interesting, isn't it? But this is, not, this is the proper way. Are we to invite everybody to the wedding feast of the Lamb? Yes. We're to go out and all over the world and let everybody know you're invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Please, come. Don't miss it. But if you're a guest, you are not the bride. The bride is a group of people. They live with the husband in his house. Did you know that the bride lives in the temple? And Sister White, in the vision, was walking along and Jesus, they came to the temple and, and Jesus raised his lovely voice and said, only the 144,000 may enter this place. Have you read that? The 144,000 are the only ones that are allowed to live in a temple. They have the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the New Jerusalem written on their foreheads. It's a beautiful. And guess what? According to chapter 14, they follow the Lamb Everywhere he goes. How do you like this? Jesus is going a million years from now. He's going to go to visit planet X. Everybody is prepared. Those beings that live in that planet have been waiting for this, for this special event. And suddenly they see the cloud. There's the angels lining up. There is Jesus. And guess what? He brought his bride along with him. He didn't, he didn't empty the earth. He just brought his bride. Those that live with him in the temple. I believe... We have evidence here clearly that the bride is 144,000. And God is inviting you to allow him to so fill your mind and soul with his Holy Spirit that he can take out all those worldly things out of your life. He can fill your mind with his word. He can fill your mind with his Holy Spirit to the point that he so controls you and you surrender so much to him that he can control your thoughts and your actions in such a way that it's safe to write on your head the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and New Jerusalem. And then it'll be your job to go invite other people to come in. It's a beautiful picture. A beautiful picture. And Seventh-day Adventists have been blessed with an understanding of the great controversy. They understand there's a people that have to follow the Lamb. They, have, they, they keep the commandments of God and they have the spirit of prophecy. But they don't keep it by their own power. Can anybody keep the commandments through their own power? No. So it's not salvation by works. That's impossible. It's, if you love me, allow me to control you so much that I can keep the commandments through you. That you won't dishonor me anymore because you're so surrendered to me that everything that I would do, you would do because I control you. It's about surrender. Can anybody, does anybody have the power to surrender? Yes. God has given all human beings the power to choose to surrender. When you choose to surrender, then God fights the battle for you. If you say, well, I can do it. No, you can't. The devil might say, let him do it two or three times and then get him. And you always fail. So salvation by works is impossible. Focusing on works is impossible. Unless you accept free salvation and then you give yourself so much by faith that God can live through you and do anything he wants to with you because you surrender every time to anything he, any impulse he gives you. Isn't it a beautiful picture? It's a beautiful picture. And therefore, I would like to ask. Today you have understood. Last night, many of you came forward. And by the way, the invitation today 
If you've already given your life to Christ and you've already made that decision, you can recommit it. You can come forward too. Today you understand that God is looking for a people that are willing to follow him 